Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and in this session of the video we're going to talk about the upper limb venous drainage. Right, so what is upper limb venous drainage? Uh, before starting the talking about the venous drainage, uh, I want to make sure that in, at the end of the video you will be understanding the complete drainage of the upper limb with an easy concept and remembering idea. So before uh, talking about upper limb venous drainage, we have to make a few things clear. Uh, the first thing is, this is the palmar side of the hand, and this is the dorsum side of the hand. And the thumb side shows uh, that it's, uh, if you move away from the thumb, it's the lateral side, and if you move uh, towards the pinky finger, it's the medial side. So I hope these concepts are clear, and now talk about uh, the venous drainage of the upper limb. So we have actually divided the upper limb venous drainage into two portions so what is like that so this portion till the brachial artery this portion is deep uh deep deep vein veins all right these are the deep veins and these are the superficial veins but remember the superficial veins in the upper limb are more important comparatively uh to the deep veins because this uh, superficial uh, vein especially this median cubital vein is actually used as a uh, vein puncture you know used for an injection in the cubital fossa over here so right uh, we will be coming to the median cubital vein in just a bit and we will make this topic as interesting as possible. So I want you to stay with me till the end. So what happened? <clears throat> uh, consider, uh, we are considering the superficial veins first. So this is the dorsum. I mean, this is my hand is dorsum. So first the vein starts as a dorsal digital vein. So veins moving from my dorsum of my digits. So these are my digits. So from the dorsal digital veins, the first is dorsal digital veins and move towards the uh, metacarp dorsal metacarpal vein and again there's a venous arc over here like all the veins drain together into an arc like shaped big vein so we call it the dorsal venous arc so this is on the this side kind of like this dorsal venous arc so kind of like that one right all those dorsal digital that added end up into the dorsal metacarpals and from the dorsal metacarpal end up into the dorsal venous arc so what here something interesting happens the dors from the dorsal venous arc which is actually superficial right um, two major veins arise so we have the concept like veins we if you're talking about veins we are going we should be going from down to the like it's opposite to the artery because of its flow uh, so what happens uh, we are in the dorsal venous arc so from dorsal venous arc two important veins are going to arise that is the cephalic or some uh, like some people pronounce it a cephalic vein and other is a basilic vein so how would we remember on which side is the cephalic and on which side is the basilic vein so remember the cephalic vein is on the lateral side and the bas basilic vein is on the medial side all right so my pinky finger shows the medial side. So the medial side, if we go this word, this is the medial side. So on the medial side, we have got the basilic vein and on the lateral side, we've got the cephalic vein. So both veins arise like this and they take a turn towards my palmar side, like both veins, they're going to take a turn. The cephalic vein moves inward toward palmar side and again, the uh, my cephalic vein or cephalic vein moves towards uh, the palmar side or anteriorly and, move, and, and they both come together. And they both come together anteriorly in the anterior of the forearm, like cephalic vein is going to coming from, uh, coming, uh, moving like this word and towards my, uh, towards my arm or like in the uh, distant, uh, proximal part of my uh, forearm. So they are moving like this one. This is the cephalic vein. This is exactly the uh, way the cephalic vein moves upward and this is exactly, exactly the bas basilic vein moves upward. So you can see that cephalic vein and basilic vein are moving upward. So what happens? Here an interesting thing happens. At this point, so-called cubital fossa, the cephalic and basilic meet up. But before talking how they meet up, remember this one, a branch, uh, I like, and a, a vein is going to be connect, connecting the cephalic to basilic and that vein is called cub, median cubital vein. So it's like this one. So the median cubital vein starts from the cephalic vein and ends in the cubital vein. Remember that. Never say it is start from B to C. It's always from C to B. So from cephalic to basilic. 
So if anybody asks where does the median uh, kibbutz line starts, it's from uh, from the kephalic towards the basilic. All right. So uh, this one, uh, there's just a branch. It's not the end of the kephalic vein. So there's a branch, and uh, it's kind of a moving towards the uh, basilic vein. And this vein is specially called as median kibbutz vein. And when uh, the nurse is going to inject their injection or anything or vein puncture, they actually use this median kibbutz vein. So whenever you go to the doctor and going for injection, remember you are being injected in the median cubital vein. All right, this is all about the median cubital vein. And now we are going to move upward. So cephalic, kef, the, forget the cephalic vein because it's going, then after that, the cephalic vein go upward. And, 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 and as, we, as it goes upward, it is going to join directly the axillary vein, right? It's directly going upward and axillary vein. But one thing more important is the basilic vein. So now we're going to talk about the basilic vein. So what happens in basilic vein, they are both rising and that's on the uh, medial side. So the basilic vein moves upward. It is joined by the median cubital vein, but another vein is coming. And which this vein is coming from the dorsal side of the, uh, um, on the uh, palmar side of the hand. So it comes straightward and this this vein is called median antibrachial vein. Remember this one. A median antibrachial vein joins the mostly joins the basilic vein. Sometimes it gives branches to both cephalic and basilic. Sometimes it only gives to cephalic, but mostly it joins the basilic vein. So what happens? Two main structures join with the basilic vein. It's median cubital vein. It's the uh, median antibrachial vein, and this basilic vein, after joining, it it goes upward right and again as it goes upward it joins with this artery with this vein which is called brachial vein so when basilic and brachial vein join together remember this one make it clear when basilic and brachial vein join together they're actually going to form a vein called axillary vein these are not the branches different but they when they combine together they give rise to axillary vein and in that axillary vein a cephalic vein is coming from that side and is going to drain towards them so it's kind of like that uh, the uh, cephalic vein is coming towards and it's draining in the axillary vein but over here uh, the basilic vein and another front uh, and the uh, brachial vein which is actually a deep vein they combine together to form the axillary vein so a further course after the sub uh, axillary vein, we're just going to talk about in, in a bit, but let's uh, talk about the deep vein first. It's very easy, not big, big of a deal. So uh, about the deep vein, which is called, uh, which is actually the brachial vein. So what happens, let's start from the palmar metacarpals. So from the palmar metacarpals, the uh, metacarpal vein collect the, uh, from the palmar metacar metacarpals, and they drain it into the deep venous sac. There's another deep venous sac inside our hand, and that drains it into the, it's kind of follow the arterial route of uh, our uh, brachial artery and kind of that. So it drains again into radial vein, and radial vein is going, uh, connecting with the ulnar, which is uh, which is actually coming from the palmar digital veins, they drain up into the superficial venous arc. Again, that is going to drain up into the ulnar uh, vein, and they when radial and ulnar veins combine together to give rise to brachial vein. So brachial vein and basilic vein combine together to give uh, rise to the axillary vein. So what happened? This axillary vein, which is actually in the axilla, when cross the first rib, it is going to be converted. Uh, its, its name is going to be changed. The vein is not changing. Its name is changing because they are crossing uh, certain parts of the uh, body. So axillary vein is going to be converted into subclavian and subclavian vein is going to change its name into internal jugular vein and from internal jugular vein is going to be uh, it's going to drain into it's actually is going to drain into the brachiocephalic vein and that brachiocephalic vein is finally going to drain into the superior vena cava so this is the basic idea regarding the uh, upper limb venous drainage so simple so easy just 